today we're going to be reading the book of Jonah. Because my other plan for this stream did not work out that well. But I thought that's a good story everybody's heard of at least once. And we can add a few things here and there. And I remember there was a um, friend of mine. There was a guy that commented. He goes by the name of Toy Soldier 67 and he kept commenting wanting me to read some of the book of Jonah. So, what I'll do is I'll read the whole book. And then when we get to the part that he likes, um, I'll make note of it. I think that would be one of the best ways to go over it. The book of Jonah. Okay, that's in the Old Testament for all you people who don't read the Bible. <laughs> um, but anyways, the book of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatadai. I don't know how to say his name. Nobody told me how to say his name because he's not important to the story. Anyway, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Hmm. No political jokes. Um, <coughs> Seattle. <laughs> anyway, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish for the presence of the Lord. Yeah, that's a great idea, Jonah. <laughs> and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. He's going to Tarshish. That's the other end of the world. Anyway, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Okay, so he's like, no, nah, go to Nineveh. No, I'm going to Tarshish. So, you know, stubborn. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. So the mighty ship was tossed. Then the mariners were afraid. Because, you know, they're out in the middle of a storm at sea, and everything's terrible. So, um, so, and, every, and cried every man unto his God, and there's some ace morning. And cast forth the waves. I can read. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to the lightning of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay, and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came unto him and said unto him, What menest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. So, like, why the heck are you asleep? Call upon your God. We're in trouble. And it's like, that was back when people understood. It's like, something terrible's happening. Quick, call on your God. Pray. You know, now, people are just hopeless. And, and continuing verse 7. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know. For whose cause this evil is upon us? <laughs> it's like, whose fault is this? So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Mm. And they said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? What's your job? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? What people art thou? Where are you from? What are you doing? Where did you do? Where are you coming from? Where are you going? Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Where'd you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Anyway, and, I, and he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. It's like, nah, you have to. You are a Hebrew, but you don't fear the Lord, the God. It's like, made the sea and the dry land. It's like, yeah, he, our, <laughs> the beginning of our book actually tells us he founded this, the earth upon the waters. So I decided to flee upon the waters, you know, the place they didn't even have to put much work into. He did, I'm making a joke. But it's like, he, this is the grand creator, the guy that made everything, and you think you could run for him? He made distance, you know. <laughs> Continuing verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? <laughs> I think that's a fair question. For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. 
Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought and was temptuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth to the sea, so shall the sea be calm for you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So it's like, kill me. I'm still not going to Nineveh. I still win. <laughs> Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it into land. So they're like, we ain't going to kill you. You got a job to do. But they could not. For the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Therefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from their raging. Huh. The men, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and, all, and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Like, what did they sacrifice? They're making a fire on the top of a wooden boat? I wonder how they did that. I'm sorry, that's just my thinking process. Oh, this is the part that he liked. Um, This is part Toy Soldier 67 liked. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. Okay, that's the part he liked. Eh, there's another part that ties into this later on. We'll get to it. And said, I cried by reasoning. See the fan pushing the paper. And said, I cried by reason of mine, affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, and in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters could pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The reeds are, are wrapped around my head. I went down into the bottoms of the mountains. The earth, her bars, was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in, to thee, you know, came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observed lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that thy, which I, I will pay that, that I have bound. Salvation is of the Lord. And this is another part that ties into the, be, the beginning part. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Now, you listening? Good. Um... And the Lord spake, it said, he spake unto the fish. See, the fish listened to what God had to say, but Jonah didn't. It's because the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah. What if it went to Tarshish, you know, <laughs> instead of doing what it was supposed to do? Um, but that's just a little silly thought. Also, I will also say that when the Jews came to Jesus and asked him for a sign to prove that, you know, he, he was who he was, um... He come up and it's like, you shall get no sign out of me except for one Jonah, because he was going to be dead inside the earth for three days and then rise. Um. Anyways, let's keep let's keep going back. Continuing in chapter three, and the word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time. <laughs> so it's like, are you going to be smart like the fish, Jonah? Are you going to listen to me, huh, buddy? Huh, huh? Are you? Are you? <laughs> Arise, go unto Nineveh. That great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, a three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty day, yeah, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So, and that's how he told the people. He didn't tell them what they did wrong. But he's like, you got 40 days. This place is going to be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. They're like, we're going to humble ourselves before God. We ain't going to wear nothing pretty. Glory to God. No. For a word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, 
Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, no, nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn or repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had, said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. But it displeased Jonah, because, you know, he's just a great person, and he really just wants them to repent. No, he wants them nuked. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Yeah, this guy, he's, he's just a stand-up guy. His opinion really means something. You have to force him to go to work. Anyway, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish. And this is why he didn't listen. For I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of evil. Now that, is terrible to be angry at God for that. It's like if God told you to go to a place that you don't like, like if you're a Republican, think Seattle, or if you're a Democrat, think like Texas. Anyway, and it's like, and it's like, no, I ain't going there. They think they're diff they're different from me, and they did do evil inside of the Lord. But you go in there, and it's like, I want you to change your ways. I want you to be friendly and be more like me. But like, he's tell God told him there to save these people's lives and souls and. They can be nicer people and realize they're doing something wrong that hurts them and others around them. And he's like, no, I don't want to because you're a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness and repentance of evil. Ooh, what a piece of work. Anyway, continuing in chapter 4, verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take I beseech thee my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. <laughs> he's like, what a sore loser. I mean, like, really, this guy, he's like, my enemies are still alive. How dare they? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, to her, Dost thou wear to... Let me try this again. Then said the Lord... Okay, yeah. Then said the Lord... This is God's answer. Dost thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east... See... <laughs> he went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. Me and my um, Bible study group um, at the church I go to, we was talking about um, the direction of east and how it has to do with like going east in the Bible. Like Several characters do that. Most of the time it's not good characters. So Jonah going to the east, you know, also did that. Um, it's that under, the sh under it in shadow till he might see what becomes of the city. It's like, he hopes God repents of his repentance. He's like, nah, get him anyway. And the Lord God, and continue verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, a gourd, gourd, midget pumpkin, and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of this gourd. So God made this plant grow really big so he had some shade in the hot day while he's there being hateful. Jonah's sitting there being a hater. But God prepared a worm. When the morning arose the next day, when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did rise that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted, and wished, <laughs> he knocked him out, <laughs> and wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I will do well to be angry even unto death. One more thing. He could have went inside the city and gotten shade. I never thought about that. He was just there being a jerk. He could have went somewhere else and he wouldn't have fainted. He stayed out in the heat so long waiting for those people to die that he fainted from heat exhaustion. Or um, heat syncope. You know? <laughs> okay, continue verse 10. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow. Which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, 
wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, not so much cattle. And that's the end of the story. And it's like, yeah, Jonah, what an idiot. But it's like, do you have mercy on your enemies? If God tells you to talk to someone, do you go do it? There are many people I know, they won't share the gospel. And it's like, that's our job. And it's like, yeah, but I'd rather be part of a church membership. I don't got time to do it outside. I'm like, yeah, you do. It's, thinking, it's kind of controversial, but honestly, I would think this, which is, you know, if you had the opportunity where if you have free time to go to church, you maybe could skip a Wednesday night and, you know, maybe make a Bible channel. Or, <laughs> um, or you know, spend time with, like, your nieces and nephews, sons and daughters, stuff like that, people, family members that you're with a lot, but you don't get the time to tell them about Jesus, or you don't see them much, but you want to influence them for the Lord. Because people's souls matter a lot. It matters so much to God that He gave all He got. He gave Himself to come down here to be able to talk to you and have a relationship with you. So, how you react is your own business. But I think God cared enough for that city. He whooped Jonah. <laughs> I'd rather be obedient and not need a whooping. <laughs> Um, and that was the Old Testament, the New Testament. We got the gospel, the good news, which is we have made we can be made right with God through Jesus Christ and His sacrifice. We, not from the works we do, but from the work He did. And He's coming back again. And I want you to have that hope in your life, because you matter. And unlike Jonah, I know you matter more than a gourd. <laughs> Or grief. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a nice day. God bless you, and goodbye, friends.